Well, here we have the electric bike controller come from China. Uh, loads of Chinese writing. If anyone's familiar with that, let me know what it says in English. So, what we first it, Chinese something, ABS, EBS, EABS, electronic ABS, who knows? Um, some Chinese wiring diagrams in. Some wiring diagrams in Chinese. Fantastic. Right, okay, so here we have the controller itself. This will do sensorless and sensored motors. There is your Hall Effect sensor wire. These, hang on, get this wire, it's a battery wire. These are your phased wires, the main wires that go into the motor. And these are your two power wires. This is a 72 volt controller. This is the self learn line, so this programs the thing in sensorless mode. You plug them in, wait 60 seconds, and the thing's got its bearings and knows what to do. These are all the accessory wires for door locks and things that's to that's to power out. Various other wires on there that I don't know what they're actually for. These are meant for like little electronic Chinese cars and things like that as well. They put these in all sorts of things pedicabs, little electric taxi things, electric scooters. Electric bikes, basically if it's motorised and electric, yeah they use this sort of thing. Um, that's why this stuff is dirt cheap on eBay. So here's the controller itself then, in, in bits. I've pre undone the screws for the video. It's an 18 FET controller. Here's your 18 MOSFETs along here, field effect transistors. These uh, are what power the bike, what make it move. Um, over here, very important, is your current shunt. This limits the amount of current to whatever the controller is rated at. And limits fun factor. It protects the controller from blowing up. But we don't worry about shit like that when the controller costs about 20 quid or whatever it is I paid for this thing. You can put some solder across here, and depending on how daring you want to be, I just go the whole hog and fill this area with solder. Then the thing has a lot more power handling capability. I've never blown one up because I've never blown a controller up on its own accord. It's never the controller that's blown up. I've always I've blown motors up, then the motor's gone short, and then it's blown the controller up. I've never actually blown a controller up on it just by front modding it. It usually pops the motor first if it's a small, like 9 continents, 1000 watt or something like that. If it's a Muxus 3K turbo, then you're less likely to pop it, but it can happen. <laughs> okay, one of the things you need, might need to replace in these is the capacitors. They're a little bit cheap. They're very cheap, actually. They're probably scavenged out of some old hi-fi or something someone threw away 20 years ago, but hey-ho. Um, <laughs> they're not brand name ones, they're probably not reused. I've never actually had them, I've only had them blow once, and that was when I was using them very close to their specified voltage. It was 63 volts caps, and it was run at about 62 volts. So, yeah. Right, that concludes the video on this electric bike control. Oh, no, it doesn't. Let's have a proper look at this uh, board here. Yes, there's the underside of the board. What a lovely job they've done with the thermal paste. Their thermal paste is meant to be there. Somehow it's over there. It's not conductive stuff as far as I'm aware, but I will wipe it off. It does pay to have a look inside these things before you power them up, because you can some even in the expensive ones like Savatron and stuff, I've seen where the wires have been cut and shorting out of the casing, and trying to send one of these things back is impossible, so you might as well check it first anyway, because you've not got anything to lose. You've <laughs> not got any warranty to begin with, so it's best to check them. See you later.